Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Governor, Congressman, Mr. Speaker, Admiral Anderson, County Commissioners, Mr. Mayor, and everyone here today, and the thousands who are watching online in our live stream. My name is Marshall Spivak. I'm the CEO of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial and a proud advocate of its risk history and significance. On behalf of our crew and our board of trustees, welcome to the City Invincible. Like her namesake state, the Battleship New Jersey is truly special. The New Jersey is the most decorated battleship in the 248-year history of the United States Navy, a distinction earned over 21 years in the active fleet and service in World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, and Lebanon. The story, though, of the battleship is really a tapestry of, of 45,000 sailors and Marines each who have graced their decks, their memories etched into the steel armor and cramped bunks stacked three or four high, a testament to their shared experiences. The story of the battleship is also a uniquely New Jersey one. Ultimately, she's just another in the long line of truly great Jersey girls. She's not scared to strut her stuff, and we really know she's not taking nothing from nobody. She doesn't pump her own gas. And she doesn't pump her own gas. Best of all, she has the firepower to back it up. Launched on December 7, 1942 at dry dock number three in the Philadelphia Navy shipyard, the same dry dock that she'll return to. The BB-62 of the famed Iowa class is the longest and fastest battleship in history. In World War II, she served in some of the biggest naval battles and saw more combat than any other Iowa class battleship. The Big J played a role in every amphibious invasion in the Pacific Theater after 1943. In Korea, she sailed as the flagship of the Seventh Fleet, earning four battle stars for her contributions at the 38th parallel. In Vietnam, she delivered firepower for freedom, firing 5,688 rounds of 16-inch shells and 14,891 rounds of 5-inch shells. Finally, President Ronald Reagan reactivated the Black Dragon as part of his vision for a 600-ship Navy. He described her as, still in the prime of her life, a gallant lady, the New Jersey. She served off the coast of Lebanon, and with hours, within hours of the New Jersey's imposing appearance off Beirut, a ceasefire was instituted. The Commandant of the Marine Corps, General P.X. Kelly, emphasized at the time, there is no weapon system in the world that comes even close to the visible symbol of enormous power represented by the battleship. In 1998, it was finally time for her to come home for good when she was struck from the Naval Vessel Registry. The ship was awarded to the Home Port Alliance in Camden, an incredible bipartisan group of true servant leaders led by the likes of individuals like Patricia Egan Jones, John Mathewson, and of course, one of our greatest friends and supporters, Congressman Donald Norcross. Shortly thereafter, the ship left Bremerton, Washington to head through the Panama Canal, and finally to where she stands here today on the Camden waterfront, a living museum and memorial. She was retired from active duty, but like so many members of our armed forces, she continues to serve her community in new ways. And with the work done while we're in dry dock, she will remain here for decades to come. Now we're proud to say that our newest sister ship has the watch, the SSN 796, a Virginia-class nuclear-powered fast attack submarine that will also bear the name USS New Jersey when she enters the active fleet this September at Naval, Naval Weapon Station Earl in Monmouth County. The submarine just finished sea trials and we're honored that the chief of the boat, Master Chief Cameron, is here today along with Lieutenant Commander Jackie Penichet, who is TAD in New Jersey as her weapons officer. Getting to today, yes, absolutely. Getting to today and the launch of this dry dock process was a task that felt almost as gigantic as the battleship herself. And we couldn't have done it without the support of the state of New Jersey. Thank you, Governor, Mr. Speaker, members of the legislature who are here, who last year appropriated $5 million as part of the state budget for dry docking, along with $750,000 in a matching grant from the New Jersey Historic Trust. The County of Camden also provided a county guarantee for the ship to bond another $3.25 million 
to help us reach our goal. The county is represented on stage by Luca Pelli, our commissioner director, and our great relationship and partnership with the city of Camden, led by the great mayor Vic Starfin, allows us to remain one of the state's biggest and largest tourist attractions. Most importantly, most importantly, we're successful because of you. Our veterans, their families, and the hundreds of thousands of supporters across the state, the country, and internationally who visit the battleship, tune into our content, and understand the importance of maintaining a living piece of history, such as the Battleship New Jersey. And is also willing to watch a very random 16-minute video of our curator, Ryan, discussing the ins and outs of the 1006 Navy Chair and any other pedantic thing that you could find on the Battleship New Jersey. This morning, you'll hear from our distinguished dignitaries on the importance of preserving Battleship New Jersey. After the ceremony, we we'll hope you'll write to us on social media and tell us why you think it's important to maintain and preserve the battleship. To begin the ceremony, I'll call upon the Honor Guard from Navy Fleet Logistics Support Squadron to post the colors, followed by a national anthem from the battleship's resident bugler, Nan LaCourt. Honor Guard, advance the colors. Thank you, Dan. Honor Guard, retire the colors. Please join me in welcoming the Chief of the Boat of the PC New, PCU New Jersey, Master Chief Cameron, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Master Chief. I'll now ask Lieutenant Commander James Johnson, Navy Chaplain, to lead us in the invocation. Let us pray. To everything there is a time and a season. And on this day, we thank you, O oh God, for the time you have given the USS New Jersey as she sailed in waters of calm, served in the waters of conflict, and has sat here in the waters of Camden. 
We thank you that you've been strong to save every sailor and Marine who has walked on these decks and every shipmate who continues to keep the watch in places near and far. As the battleship New Jersey enters this season of repair and renewal, we thank you for those who have provided time, talent, and treasure so that this day would take place. And we ask you to guide those who have been charged to care for her with wisdom and skill. At your appointed time, may a restored battleship New Jersey return to this place to continue to be a memorial, monument, and model of honor, courage, and commitment to future generations for the times and seasons yet to come. With humility, we ask for your presence and blessing on all that will be said and seen during this ceremony today. In your sovereign name, amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Chaplain. Mayor Victor G. Carstarfin proudly serves as the 50th mayor in Camden City's history. Appointed to office in 2021 and elected in 22 around the city, he's just Mayor Vic. Many know him as a legendary Camden High School player and Temple University basketball player, but we at the Battleship know him as one of our biggest supporters. To offer a warm welcome to the city and to read a letter sent to the Battleship by the President of the United States, please welcome Camden Mayor Vic Carstarfin. Wow, this crowd's gonna make me say that backwards. Wow! Good morning, welcome everybody to the city of Camden, a beautiful Camden waterfront. I'm extremely honored as mayor to take part in today's historic ceremony. I'm pleased to welcome our elected officials, special guests including our governor, Phil Murphy, our congressman, yep, yeah, let's give, that's a round of applause. When Gov is in town, we round of applause after I say Gov Murphy. <laughs> Congressman Donald Norcross, yeah. Speaker Coughlin, yeah. Commissioner Director Capelli, my man, yeah. our federal, state, county, and local officials that are here today, including our past and present military personnel, and welcome to our residents and visitors from far and wide. Whether it was during military conflicts, wartime, or now as a museum, the battleship New Jersey, her past leadership and past crew members, and now her current staff have been there. Been there for each of us, been there for the city of Camden, and she has been there for our nation. That is why it makes me so proud to see that we, all of us here today, have come to get together to support the battleship New Jersey as she ships out for repairs. The lasting impact of this iconic battleship must not be understated. Decades after her construction just across the river and many years after her distinguished military service, the battleship still commands tremendous pride and respect. I'm now pleased to read to you a very special letter from President Joe Biden. I feel like I should read this in my James Earl Jones voice. But I, send my, no. I, I send my warmest greetings to everyone gathered in Camden, New Jersey for the Battleship Dry Dock departure celebration. The USS New Jersey served at the forefront of history from the time she was launched one year after the attack of, on Pearl Harbor. Through times of triumph and times of turbulence, the courageous crew members who served on this battleship helped set our nation and the entire world on a safer, stronger, and more secure course. From fighting the forces of fascism during World War II to supporting the cause of liberty during the Cold War, the sailors of the USS New Jersey distinguished themselves time and again through their steadfast service on behalf of our country. Today, as a museum and key part of the Camden community, this storied ship uplifts the spirits of countless visitors who learn about her historic journey. 
The story of the USS New Jersey is a uniquely American one, a story of service and sacrifice, duty and devotion, and courage and character. It reminds us that when we work together and are guided by our highest ideals, there's nothing beyond our capacity in this great nation. In the years ahead, I hope the important role this ship has played remains a source of pride and inspiration throughout this vibrant community. As we celebrate this momentous dry dock departure, may we forever honor and uphold the legacy of the brave women and men who made the USS New Jersey the most decorated battleship in the history of the United States Navy. May God bless all of you, and may God bless all those who serve and defend our nation. President Joe Biden. What a tremendous honor, and I'm privileged to attend so many events here at the battleship, from the Army-Navy events, the historic, historical ceremonies, to honoring our military veterans, to the Red Cross Month, community events, everything. The battleship is a big part and fabric of the city of Camden. On a personal note, Marshall, Jack, everyone here, Pat, uh, it just means a lot to the city. And when they say I'm always here, I'm always here. It could be a six-year-old's birthday party, and I want to be here on this battleship because we support each other in the city. It's all about Team Camden Battleship. You're one of the greatest teammates we've had. Let's keep pushing and making our community better. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. The battleship has no greater friend than Congressman Donald Norcross. When the Navy announced that the New Jersey would be available for donation, he joined the Home Port Alliance as a founding trustee, advocating for the Camden waterfront as the permanent home for the Big J. In every facet of his career, whether as president of the New Jersey, uh, Southern New Jersey AFL-CIO, a state senator, or a member of Congress, Congressman Norcross has stood for and by the battleship and its veterans. As a, as a member of Congress, He's made the defense of our nation one of his top priorities. And as a member of the House Armed Services Committee, he travels the world representing the United States to foreign militaries and leaders while supporting our troops, bases, and servicemen and women back home. Just last year, he secured half a million dollars in federal funds for the battleship to build a permanent structure on the ship's fantail. The structure will serve as a learning space for our STEM education programs and an event center where the battleship can host promotion and retirement ceremonies, concerts, proms, gals, and more. It's the next big project following our dry dock completion. Whenever we need him, the congressman and staff are just a phone call away. And we know that because we've called and they've answered time and again. Please welcome our congressman and our friend, Don Norcross. Good morning. What a great morning it is. It reminds me, literally, Pat Jones, who was one of the founding members of the Home Port Alliance. We were literally over at the Philadelphia Yard viewing and going through the battleship before it was awarded when we were told that the Home Port Alliance here in South Jersey would be awarded this great battleship. And I was actually wearing this coat almost 25 years ago. And I won't tell my friends from the Navy, but this is an Army coat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but first of all, Marshall, for what you continue to do, not only for us in South Jersey, but what you do for this battleship is nothing short of remarkable. As leadership, we all know how important that is, and you do a terrific job. Thank you. To our great governor, it's good to be here. Thank you, Governor. Gov, great to be here. Our speaker. Thank you for what you continue to do, especially budget time. <laughs> Lou Capelli, who has been an inspirational part of the commissioners here in Camden County, but also as somebody who understands how important veterans are to the folks. Thank you, Lou. Mayor Vick was just down with me in Washington. We are uh, making rounds, trying to gather up a few extra dollars to bring home to our great city. But I just want to take a moment. The one person who is not here physically is Pat Jones, who literally helped spearhead much of what we're doing. 
and I am told she is actually on the tugboat that will be taking us out of port. So keep her in your prayers and give her a good pair of gloves. She'll need it. We also have uh, New Jersey's adjunct general here, and thank you for what you continue to do each and every day. This is a historic day. The battleship, and we've heard many things, it's the fastest, it's the longest, the most battle stars, but what it truly is, is a symbol of not only New Jersey, but for those who put on our uniform. And I just want to take a moment of personal privilege to thank all those who have put on a uniform and who wear it now. To all those veterans, let's give them a big round of applause. The men and women who keep us safe each and every day. This battleship is about preserving history so we know how and why we got here. Because the one thing we do know, freedom is not free. Sacrifice, those who served on this great ship, those who helped build it from both New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware came together in that time of need to put this great ship into action. That's why it's so important for us to be here today to remind us of those who continue to maintain this. Pat Jones, as I mentioned, put together at the time a ragtag group. There was another group, let's just say further northern, north than here, led by Joe Azzolino, who came together and there was a little bit of a competition. Well, we take the names of Senator John Matheson, Captain McGuigan, Admiral Sigenthaler, Joe Balzano, the list goes on. Ann Duvall, who is no longer with us, helped put together three volume, several thousand pages, in which the Navy made an independent decision to award the battleship to the Homeport Alliance right here in southern New Jersey. And that deserves a round of applause. And I mentioned the competition, but what Jersey does better than anybody, we might have our fights from time to time. They might be a little regionally based, might be giants against the Eagles. But at the end, we all come together as one New Jersey, as one country, and that's something we should be very proud of. I had the honor of riding on this great vessel as it came through the Panama Canal for its last time. Senator Frank Lautenberg was there on us. And it was such a tight fit, they literally had to take off the gunnels for it to fit. But nothing would stop her from coming home. We heard about what she has done. We have the 16-inch by 40-foot barrels over there. These are all symbols of not only those who defend our great country, but those who helped build it and how we came together as a nation to do this. But it wouldn't be possible and I want to say from the beginning, for the volunteers who have put over a million hours of volunteer time into restoring it and help giving it together, let's give them a big round of applause. As we know, freedom is not free. She continues to serve. And we are here to say thank you to those who came before us, those who served on, as she is known as, the Mighty Mo those who helped bring her home here to the Camden waterfront, those who brought her back to life, and those who will continue to maintain her into the future. Her mission, her vision is one of service, and she is going to continue to do that. And on behalf of a grateful nation, we thank you all for being here and being part of it. God bless you. Thank you, Congressman. You know, when I was talking to the chaplain the other day, I said, Chaplain, if you could put in a good word for us with the big guy, sun, all day. Well, we've got the sun. I forgot to say something about the wind. So we appreciate you bearing with us. Phil Murphy proudly serves as the 56th governor of the state of New Jersey. He's had a lot of great titles in his career, like United States Ambassador. But I think that probably the coolest one is Commander in Chief. As Commander-in-Chief of the New Jersey National Guard, he commands its 8,400 citizen soldiers and airmen. During the governor's six years in office, he's overseen the highest operational tempo in New Jersey history. From the Middle East to our southwest border to our communities during COVID-19, 
Governor Murphy has provided dedicated and generous support to the New Jersey's men and women in uniform and their families. Under the governor's leadership, and now under the leadership also of our adjutant general, now Major General Lisa Howe, New Jersey has increased public investment in state-delivered veterans' benefits, programs, and services. And together with the legislature, it has expanded eligibility for the disabled veterans' property tax exemption, and the governor is set to deliver on his promise that by the end of this fiscal year, all 21 counties in New Jersey will have a veteran service office. And I know, uh, Governor, uh, St. Patrick's Day was just a few days a few days ago, and uh, also please remember that we have a liquor license, so you're also technically preserving the largest bar in the state of New Jersey. <laughs> We're very proud of that, too. <laughs> Governor, your participation today shows the state of New Jersey cares for its own, whether it's residents or battleships, at the very highest level. Please, wel please join me in welcoming the governor of the state of New Jersey, the Honorable Phil Murphy. Thanks, Marshall. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Uh, I'm a Murphy, so I perked up when I heard there's a bar of this. Uh... So thank you, Marshall, and thanks to all of the distinguished folks with us today. I've got some short remarks on paper. The chances that I can read these remarks in the paper not blow off the podium are close to zero. So I, I was going to quote Ronald Reagan, Joe Biden, uh, a great Jersey and Bull, Admiral Bull Halsey, uh, but you'll have to take my word for it. Uh, so to all the distinguished colleagues up here, especially Rear Admiral uh, Thomas Anderson, who is a North Brunswick, New Jersey native admiral, God bless you. Uh, to all the distinguished service members, uh, to our incredible veterans, to our mem members of our administration, especially the cabinet, again, to the all-star team up here, Mayor Vic, uh, Lou, Craig, uh, Donald, uh, and the, the, our military representatives. This is an incredibly uh, powerful day for this state and for this community. Uh, you think about World War II, Korea, Vietnam, the Cold War, Lebanon. You all know this as well as I do. There's no, there's no battleship in the history of our nation that comes close to the legacy created and lived by the USS New Jersey. And I'm incredibly honored to be here today, especially, as I mentioned, with our blessed veterans of all branches of the military who have served to defend our nation. And I think about the Cold War and the challenges that that represented. And frankly, what we're dealing with today is not so far off. And so to the active members of our military who stand up for our freedoms every day, we thank you, and I want you to know that we have your backs, and we are with you, and to stay safe as you pursue freedom, democracy, and the uniqueness of the great American story. God bless you all. God bless the USS New Jersey, and especially God bless our active members of military and our blessed veterans and families. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Craig Coughlin is the 171st Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly and the longest-serving presiding officer of the Assembly in our state's history. He served honorably since 2010, representing the 19th Legislative District in Middlesex County. As Speaker, he's championed many causes, most prominently his work to eliminate food deserts and help the food insecure. But he's always been a friend to our state's veterans and our active-duty military. He's a great leader and friend and mentor to many in and around the State House, and I think he's one of the legislators all around great guys. I had the privilege of seeing him in action as a young staffer in the Assembly. Please join me in welcoming the Speaker of the New Jersey General Assembly, Craig Coughlin. Thank you, Marshall. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really glad the wind picked up. Like the governor, I don't want to pollute the uh, the river with my comments because they won't last long. I am thrilled to be here, though, with my fellow Middlesex County resident, Admiral. King. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be with my friends uh, here in Camden, and it's great to be here to tri with, to share in this tribute to this remarkable and awesome ship. I I can only imagine the dismay on an enemy's face when the New Jersey USS New Jersey arrived. I can imagine a conversation that probably started off with, we're not going to have a good day today. But it, it is, 
but what it has become now is something special to all of us in New Jersey. I remember taking my, I have three little boys, well, they're not so little anymore, but I had three sons, and we, I remember bringing them here, and the awe that was on their face when they were able to walk around and to see it, and to understand that their grandfathers, both of whom had been, it, served in the Navy, had been on ships, not, not as grand as this, but uh, had been in ships, and what this must have meant, and what the people who were on, who served on those ships did. They literally saved the world. The most decorated warship in the history of the United States. A, a, a ship that has won more battle awards than any other ship. It is a fitting tribute to the people who built it, to the ingenuity of our nation, and to the brave men and women who served on it. It is a pleasure and privilege to be with everyone here. I wish the ship a short bon voyage. Can't wait to see it come back in its grandeur, and we can share in its beauty again when it does. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for the privilege of letting me be with you. Thank you all. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Commissioner Director Lou Capelli, Jr. has been serving the residents of Camden County since uh, 2003 and as director since 2006. While helping to spur economic redevelopment in Camden County, Lou has also seen to the safety of its residents, building the Camden County Police Department, upgrading the emergency 911 system, and championing safer housing and more effective mental health and substance abuse services. Moreover, in his partnership with City Hall, he's helped lead Camden's reformation and growth, turning the waterfront once again into a local economic hub. We're grateful for the constant support of the county through thick and thin, helping us to keep floating both literally and figuratively during COVID, providing over $1 million in American Rescue Plan funds in support of the battleship to help us weather that storm. And we did because of Camden County. With so much continued promise here on Camden's waterfront, we look forward to partnering and working with our friends on the Board of Commissioners, many of who are here today, in the coming months and years. Please welcome Camden County Commissioner Director Lou Capelli. Thank you, Marshall. You should all be happy to know that because of the weather, I've reduced my speech from 30 minutes to 25 minutes. <laughs> Governor Murphy, Congressman Norcross, Speaker Coughlin, Mayor Kerstarfin, Admiral Anderson, current and past members of the Armed Services, Chaplain, thank you so much on behalf of the Board of Commissioners of Camden County for including us and being here today to celebrate the battleship New Jersey. Welcome to our great county seat, the city of Camden, led so well by Mayor Vic Karstarfson. We're honored here today to celebrate the battleship. It's a prime example of American military might and American ingenuity. Its presence on the Camden waterfront is a daily reminder of what it takes to defend freedom at home and abroad. This battleship is a great source of pride for the state of New Jersey and for Camden County. And it's also, of course, fitting today to salute those members of the Navy and Marines who served on the battleship New Jersey. Their sacrifice, their courage, and their heroism are prime examples of what, of what makes the United States Navy the most successful Navy in the world. Let's hear it for all of our military members, past and present. We are joined today by the Board of Commissioners, our Deputy Director Ed McDonald, Commissioner Nash, Commissioner Dyer, Commissioner Young. And we all want today to salute Marshal Spivak and all of those who have volunteered to maintain this museum on the Camden waterfront. Let's give them one more round of applause. It's an amazing, amazing job that they do. And Marshal, this is really a special day. Congratulations. You did a great job. This battleship has graced the banks of our city, and we will miss her while she's gone, but we look forward to the celebration of when she returns. God bless America. God bless all those serving. Thank you. Thank you, Lou. We're honored to have with us today Rear Admiral Tom Anderson. Rear Admiral Anderson is a native of North Brunswick, New Jersey. He was commissioned in 1991 in the Naval ROTC. Admiral Anderson's tours as a surface warfare officer included the USS Capadanio and the USS Arleigh Burke. 
Upon selection to the engineering duty community in 1996, he attended the Naval Postgraduate School where he earned a Master's of Science in Mechanical Engineering. And he also completed the Total Ships System Engineering Curriculum and became a California State Licensed Professional Engineer. Ashore, he has had, he has served in a variety of industrial fleet program offices and headquarters assignments in ship design, construction, maintenance, budgeting, and requirements. As a flag officer, Admiral Anderson has served in a variety of roles in command, including his present post as program executive officer of team ships, where he is responsible for Navy shipbuilding for surface combatants, amphibious ships, logistical support ships, support craft, and foreign military sales. From August 23 to January 24, the Admiral also served as acting commander of NAVC. In that role, he oversaw a global team responsible for development, construction, delivery, and maintenance of Navy ships, submarines, and systems. Please join me in a very big welcome home for New Jersey's own Rear Admiral Tom Anderson. I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> All right, good morning, New Jersey. How are we doing? Great Navy day, right? For those of you who haven't been to sea on a sh ship before, you're getting a sense for it, right? Now imagine it starts rocking up and down. That's what we do out, of, out, out in the Navy, out at sea. So uh, Governor Murphy, Congressman Norcross, flat, fellow flat platform participants, and all of you patriots who have taken the time to participate in today's events, it's an honor to be here with you to celebrate this special day in the life of this special ship. As mentioned, I join you not only as the admiral responsible for design, construction, and ultimately delivery of our Navy surface ships, but as a son of New Jersey, raised right here in God's country, the Garden State. And as I mentioned, I'm probably hitting uh, White Castle on the way out of town today. <laughs> My job building the most capable warships on the planet is comparable to that of Bureau of Construction and Chief of Repair, Rear Admiral William DeBose, who in 1940 oversaw the design and construction of USS New Jersey just a few miles down the river at the Philadelphia shipyard. Then as now, this work requires a strong and capable shipbuilding industrial base to build and maintain ships to exacting standards necessary to give our sailors the advantages they need at sea. At some point in every ship's life, even with planned maintenance, our technical experts will determine the ship has reached its end of active service life. When that happens, the ship is retired, or in Navy terms, is decommissioned, and one of three things routinely happens. One, they are scrapped, busted up for the materials used to form them. Two, they are sunk, used as target practice, by the forces of the day, and three, in a very few select cases, when the conditions are perfectly right, they are transferred to continue serving as a museum ship. To be considered to become a museum ship, the ship must first be determined to be historically significant. As you've already heard today, the crucial role USS New Jersey has played over more than half a century to service to our, in service to our country. And while the physical ship stands before us here today, I would be remiss if I didn't share what every Navy leader knows to be true, that the true advantage that our Navy has in combat is first and foremost our sailors. Sailors who raised their hand to serve, packed their sea bags, walked across the brow of USS New Jersey, brought her to life, spent themselves mastering her systems, and who, when called upon, put themselves in harm's way to take it to our adversaries to protect our way of life. This ship is historically significant because of the patriots that served aboard her. To those of you who served aboard USS New Jersey, your service and sacrifice mattered. Your presence here today is an honor, and your Navy and your nation are grateful. If I can ask all of those who have served aboard USS New Jersey to stand and be recognized, please. Round of applause, please. All right, we have several. Thank you so much. Life aboard a ship is special. When the ship is deployed, it is home. It's the place we learn to work together as a team and care for each other like family and to build memories that will sustain us and make us laugh even when 
um, hard times are hard for the rest of our lives. It is the unique opportunity to see the night sky without distractions of a city skyline and the power of the seas without the reassurance of the shore. But it's also a place of sacrifice, of time away from loved ones and the familiar comforts of the country we love enough to serve it. The men and women who serve aboard a ship understand her and their fellow sailors like no one else can. For those of us who have served and invested ourselves in service at sea and our families, days like today are powerful and tremendously important. And I'm truly grateful to be here with you to see history remembered, heritage celebrated, and honors preserved. And we are only able to be here today for this special event because of the Herculean efforts and tremendous dedicated individuals who saw a future for USS New Jersey and her rightful home here in New Jersey. The Home Port Alliance for the USS New Jersey and the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial Organizations have gone above and beyond in honoring the service of this ship and those who served aboard her. Thank you so much for that service. They now are doing the important work of exposing future generations to the Navy and the opportunities that exist to serve in it. It is important work as our country faces challenges that haven't been seen since the days when USS New Jersey was first put in service. Things like ships under fire in the Middle East, defending themselves and others from incoming attack. Ships in the South China Sea, demonstrating our resolve to keep sea lanes opened and with our partner nations, showing that aggression will not be left unchecked. We are, as we have always been, a maritime nation. Our way of life continues to rely on a strong Navy and always will. Today, we have the most capable Navy on the planet. As I mentioned, our ships are built to exacting standards, coupled with advanced weapon systems, and operated by the world's best trained and most resourceful sailors. But strength today is not guaranteed tomorrow. We must continue to find those who look to pack their sea bags and see the world aboard a Navy ship. We must continue to find those who are looking for a noble career in the shipbuilding industry, welders, electricians, machinists, to name a few. Today, I am asking each of you to be a recruiter for our Navy, exposing people who have a propensity to service to this wonderful ship and to patriots like yourselves telling your stories and advocating for a life lived in service. New Jersey has a long and distinguished history of naval service, in uniform, in civil service, and in industry. Our Navy and our nation are depending on you to keep that going and are thankful for your efforts to do so. In closing, to Museum Ship New Jersey, as you make the transit back to your place of birth, fair winds and following seas. Thank you all. Thank you, Admiral. It's really a pleasure to have you here back home in the great state of New Jersey. I'd also like to take a minute to recognize not just our ship veterans, but could you raise your hand if you're a veteran in any service branch? There's a lot of you. God bless you. Thank you for your service. In particular, I also want to recognize some of New Jersey's military leadership who's here. Of course, Major General Howe and Colonel Mays, our Deputy Adjutant General. Major General Bellinger, thank you for being here. Uh, Colonel Smith, uh, Captain Howell, Captain Smith, Colonel Wisniewski uh, are from the Joint Base, McGuire Dix Lakers, thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do on behalf of our great nation. You've heard today, yes. You've heard today what the battleship means to so many. One of New Jersey's top tourist attractions, a museum and memorial, and a piece of living history that needs your support to thrive and grow. We know your interest in the battleship and our dry docking project isn't just for today. That's why we're incredibly proud and excited to offer dry dock tours on the weekends at the Philadelphia Navy Shipyard. If you come to our tour, you won't be going on the battleship, you'll be going underneath of the battleship. A once in a generation chance to touch the ship's hull, touch and walk underneath an Iowa class battleship. We've already sold over 1,200 tickets, and they're going fast. So please join us at battleshipnewjersey.org. Finally, we wouldn't be here today 
without the amazing crew that make up the Battleship New Jersey. We're so grateful to have a dedicated board of trustees led by our chairwoman, Lisa Conte, our vice chair, Tyrone Riley, and all of our trustees. Trustees, will you raise your hand? Thank you. And of course, our incredible volunteers and staff. We've had over 750,000 hours of volunteer come aboard, ship veterans, other veterans, volunteers alike, whether you're military or not, come aboard and take on important projects. We could not do it without our volunteers. And we also could not do it without our incredible staff, many of who are actually on board already and waiting for our, for our departure. In particular, dry docking wouldn't be possible without the exceptional duo of our curator, Ryan Szymanski, and Jay Jones, our operations director. Many of you also know Ryan as the host of our YouTube channel. We have over 105 million views and over 225,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. And of course, our marketing director, Jack Willard. Can't do it without you, Jack. We're at the battleship. We're one team, we're one unit, and every single staff member from a tour guide to someone who works in ticketing or our store helped us get to where we are today. It's been a long and fast last few months. To the families of our crew, we thank you. In particular, my wife, Andrea, who likes to joke, yes, who likes to joke that I've got a lot of females in my life, not just my two little girls, but also my other girl, the Battleship New Jersey. Long may she be a staple of the Camden waterfront in the state of New Jersey. In just a few minutes, the Battleship will pull away from the pier. For those on the pier, we ask you to please remain seated. But first, I'd like to ask Admiral Anderson to join 20-year longtime veteran Johnny Quinesso Sr., or Johnny Q as we call him, Petty Officer Second Class, Johnny Q, 98 years young. Is the United States Navy veteran serving on LSM 302 in the South Pacific during World War II. We've got a lot of great World War II veterans. We saw, I saw a bus earlier from the Vineland's uh, Veterans Home. God bless each and every one of our greatest generation. They will cast a remembrance, uh, a wreath in remembrance of the men and women in uniform who are no longer with us, and for those who ultimately gave, as President Lincoln said, their last full measure of devotion. Following the wreath casting, we ask you to look up as the New Jersey State Police provide a helicopter salute to the battleship, ending with three volleys from the battleship's starboard side saluting gun, saluting gun fired by USS New Jersey veteran and com uh, Vietnam combat veteran Ken Kirsch. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you, Johnny Q. And thank you for joining us today to honor the most decorated battleship in U.S. Navy history, the USS New Jersey. Please remain in place and stay tuned to watch the Black Dragon sail downriver for the first time in nearly 25 years. We'll be leaving very shortly. Thank you. Good job, man. It was not easy.
Ladies and gentlemen, please look up as the New Jersey State Police helicopter will salute the battleship with a flyover.
Find another 